name's Alana and I work at Valley Associates for Independent Living. Today I want to talk about writing letters. At some point in your life, you'll probably need to write a letter. One common example is a thank you letter. They are a great way to formally thank someone for a gift or something nice they did for you. First, I would recommend thinking of what you want to say because that can sometimes be the hardest part. If you're saying thank you, it can be a short letter, however. I would recommend writing this part down first. Something that I find tricky is saying thank you for money. So when thanking someone for money, a good way to do that is to explain what you'll be using it for. So my example says, thank you so much for your generous gift. I'll be using it to buy a new pair of summer sandals that I've wanted to buy for a long time. I can't wait. I hope that you and your family are doing well. So now I get to be creative. I can write this letter on a card, which I love to make myself or I can write it on a piece of paper. You can be creative here. So I'm going to do an example on a card. So this type of card opens like this and I'll want to write the message on the lower half. If it were to open like this, I would want to write it on the right hand side. You usually start the letter with dear so-and-so. If you don't know the person that well or you have a more formal relationship, I would recommend using their last name so you could say, Dear Miss Smith, for example. If they're a friend or someone you're close to, you can usually just use their first name. Next, right below it, you want to put the body of the letter that you wrote out first. Um, so, right here. And then write this out here. And I'm using pencil because I'm probably going to try to reuse this card, but normally I'd recommend using pen. Your signature will again depend on your relationship with the person. So I usually stick to best, but if you're really close, close you could write love. Um, if it's someone more formal, you can stick with sincerely and then your name. An envelope that the card fits into. If you buy a card at the store, it usually comes with one. You will also need the per other person's address and a stamp. Stamps can be bought at your local post office. On the upper left hand corner, you put your own name and address. This is especially important if you think they may write back to you. If you want it to be anonymous who it's coming from, you are not required to put your address here. In the middle of the envelope, you want to put the name and address of the person that you are sending the letter to. This will be in the same format as up here. So it will be their name, their address, the city, state, and zip code. In the upper right hand corner, you will want to put a stamp. If you're including multiple pages or something inside the envelope, it may be that you need extra stamps. The post office staff can tell. Now that you've written your letter and addressed the envelope, it's time to send it off. There are a few options on how to do this. You can leave it in your mailbox for carrier pickup, or you can drop it off in a blue collection box, or you can take it to the post office to the lobby and drop it off. I hope this was helpful. Remember that expressing gratitude is actually good for you and good for your mental health. Thank you.